Today I want to show you how I set up and set the settings for the Mavic 3 to get the best video and photos that you can get out of this drone. Hey, my name is Jake and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I do lots of drone, camera, lens reviews, and tips and tutorials on how to use them. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. Today I want to walk you through the best settings and the setup that I use on my Mavic 3 to get the best photos and the best video that you can get when you're out there flying, as well as some of the best settings you can do to get the best performance as far as flight performance out of this drone. Now this is not for the Cine version, this is for the regular Mavic 3, but I do have the smart controller and I can walk you through a little bit later how do I set up the smart controller specifically but otherwise most of the other settings and setup will be exactly the same throughout the entire drone here we go walk through the app this isn't a complete exhaustive uh, run through everything but it will give you a basic idea um, starting from the top left you have what mode you're flying in so cine mode normal mode sport mode it'll tell you whether or not takeoff is allowed if you're in a restricted fly zone and you have to unlock it or anything like that if you want to get into some of the more uh, deep settings you can check here and it brings up this little dialogue that has um, some of your other settings your return to home altitude the max distance and the max uh, altitude you can fly in and then over here we go over here you've got your battery settings of course it's not going to show anything right now because we're not in flight but it shows you how much battery is left and then normally it'll show you also how much battery is left how much flight time you have left and things like that you can tap on that to get more information as you're going it shows your rc controller strength your link to to the rc and then also how much GPS satellites you have locked. It's very important that you wait to start flying until the drone says the home point has been updated because then you know it has a good GPS lock and it will return to the right home point. You will have less of a chance of a flyaway in that case. Here are these three dots are what get you in and out of all the menus. You have your uh, different modes here. You can select between photo mode, video mode, uh, master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, panos, things like that. Um, and then when you tap on each one of these, it also gives you the options for what's available in those modes. So if we go to photo mode here, you can go single, auto exposure bracketing, time shots, etc. So we'll leave it in photo mode for right now so that we can talk through the photo settings first. You have your start and stop record button right here. You can turn autofocus on or off. And then you also have your explore mode, which enters the zoom camera. And then you can cycle through your different zoom levels here. Um, I don't really use the zoom camera that much, but it is kind of a neat thing if you want to use it. Be aware that the zoom camera can only shoot in JPEG or in the standard color profile in video. And then down here, if you want to see footage you've already shot, you can pull up here and see exactly everything you've already shot. Uh, also handy if you want to delete a clip you just shot because it's totally worthless. Then down here, you can change between your auto modes and your pro mode. So the pro mode gives you the more, uh, you know, different amounts of control. You can change your shutter speed or you can leave that on auto. And then it also gives your ISO controls or you can leave that on auto, your white balance controls. All of those things can be adjusted and changed from pro mode. And then over here, you have your distance to your home, how far you've gone, and then how high you are, as well as your speed uh, vertically and horizontally. So those are good things. And then I've got my histogram up here because I like to see if anything's being overexposed or not. And then here, this is, if you push and hold this, the drone will take off as soon as you take your finger off. You push it, hold it down, the green circle will go around, and then as soon as you take your finger off, the drone will take off. So that's an easy way. The other way you can do that is push both sticks down into the center. If you want to get into the maps and see kind of where you are, you can jump in here and pull up a full screen thing of all of your maps. You can look around. I'm in a heavy no fly zone right now because I'm next to three airports. So now let's jump into the camera mode. Now, when you're in photo mode, it's gonna bring up the photo settings. When you're in video mode, it'll bring up the video settings, but you tap on the three dots there, go into camera. And here is where you can shoot JPEG raw or JPEG plus raw. I shoot in raw. Raw will give you the most amount of leeway in post to be able to edit the photos and give you the absolute most amount of data from this four third sensor, which is great. I also shoot in four by three because that's the full sensor size. If you do 16 by nine, basically it's gonna crop down the top and the bottom a little bit. If you need to use anti-flicker, you can do that here. This is where you can turn your histogram on or off, your overexposure warning. You'll see like zebra stripes kind of moving in the background if it's overexposed. Let's see on the light there, you can see though that's what the overexposure warning is. 
And then you can also put your grid lines in if you want. You can do a center point, rule of thirds, and triangle. I just do rule of thirds, that's generally what I want, or not triangle, but diagonal lines. And then you can have your peaking level, low to high to medium to normal, and that's when, if you switch to manual autofocus, you push and hold here, you can set from near to far, and it will show lines with whatever's in focus. White balance, you can do manually or uh, elect you have it do auto. A lot of times I will let it do auto and then I'll switch it to manual once I feel like it's gotten a proper white balance. And obviously you can see here, it's changed the white balance a fair amount. And you can also do that here when you're in pro mode, you can go down, click or tap right here, hit the white balance, you can change it or adjust it right there. But yeah. Auto does a good job to start out with, and then once you feel like it's found the right white balance, you can hit auto and turn it off, or you can just set it yourself. So now let's switch to video mode, and I'll walk you through the video settings. Tap here, switch to video. Do We're gonna do stay in normal. And then again, the three buttons up here, and we can switch. MP4 or MOV is really six and one half dozen. They're both just compression wrappers on what sort of, uh, you know, how you want that compressed. I use MP4 because MP4 seems to be the most compatible with everything I've used. Um, you can use MOV if you want to, but there doesn't really seem to be a difference between the two as far as I've been able to tell. And then below that you have D-Log and Normal Mode. So Normal Mode gives you your normal color, which is built in. It doesn't give you the full 10-bit color. It doesn't give you the full 422, which is what you want if you're gonna do a lot of color grading in post. So I shoot in D-Log and that gives you really some great uh, ability to color grade in post and so a lot of leeway in how exposed it is. And then you can choose H.264 or H.265. Not all of the settings will work in H.264 because H.265 is a more compressed codec, but if you have an older computer and you find you're struggling to edit the H.265 files, Switch to H.264 and you might find you have a much easier time because H.264 is not as compressed, so it'll take up a little more space, but it'll also be easier for your computer to unpack and edit with. So that's a little tip. Um, and then again, all of these other settings here are the same. Now when it comes to shooting photos and videos, I expose to the right, which means that basically I wanna set my ISO or my shutter, my aperture speed. Let's do the aperture, we'll set that down to 2.8 right there and we can adjust our ISO. So if you go too far over, it's gonna be way too overexposed like that. You can see there's a whole bunch of overexposed areas, but if you start bringing your ISO down, and of course this is a very dark room, so it's pretty dark, but you can set it to where uh, you can see here what is overexposed, and then of course you can see over there. And you know that if there are white lines on something that is overexposed, so you'll lose those highlights. So I go to where I can find the highlights pretty much on, they're not on anything I don't want them on, and they might be on super bright things like the sun or on really white clouds. And so you can expose using that. It's a, exposing to the right, essentially. But for now, I'm gonna leave the shutter and the ISO on auto for photo mode, because it does a pretty good job overall. For video mode, in D-Log, I kind of do the same thing. I just basically, I wanna make sure I'm not overexposing anything. Now in D-Log, you only have 400 and 800, the rule of thumb is keep your ISO as low as possible and then adjust with other things as you need to. So you have ND filters for this. You might have uh, your aperture. You can adjust your aperture on this as well. You can set on auto or you can manually adjust it so that it darkens or brightens the image. The best aperture I've found is about 5, 5.6 up to about F9 as far as the performance of the actual camera. But um, f2.8 and above f9 also work fine. It just, it, the image gets a little sharper at about f5.6 through f9. As I said, D-Log gives you a lot of space to be able to color grade and it gives you a lot of leeway even as far as the highlights and shadows, but keeping it as clean as possible is important. So shooting at the lowest ISO you can really helps. Now we've gone through the photo settings and the video settings that I use to get the highest quality. Raw, D-Log definitely makes a big difference. If you're gonna do something like Active Track, you need to switch to 4K, uh, Cinema 4K or 4K, and then you can tra Active Track through there. But I don't Active Track that much, so I use 5.1 because it gives you the most amount and you can punch in a little bit and still get really good full 4K quality. But let's talk about some of the controls that we set up on the controller. These are how I like to set them up. We'll go through some of the settings. Um, as far as safety goes, I keep obstacle avoidance off for the most part, but you can do it also to bypass if you want to. 
And then uh, here, this is dangerous and where a lot of people get hung up. If you have the display radar map on, but your obstacle avoidance is off, you will still see that the drone is sensing obstacles. It can get you caught in a trap where you think it's obstacle avoidance is on, but it's not, and you'll fly into something. So keep an eye on the display radar map. If that's on, but your obstacle avoidance is off, you have to keep in mind that there is no obstacle avoidance, even though the drone will tell you, yeah, there's an obstacle there. And then here you can set your max altitude, max distance, max return to home, or the auto return to home altitude. You can update the home point, which is really important if you're going to be flying from a moving boat or something like that, and you want to keep the drone closer to you if it decides to disconnect or return to home for some reason. Calibrate all that. Here you can see your battery info and battery temperature. You keep an eye on your battery temperature when it's cold. You want to keep it around 20C if you're flying in extremely cold conditions because that keeps the... Um, keeps the voltage constant or more consistent, I should say. And then here's where you can unlock a geo zone if you're in a place where you have to get permission to fly. And you can also do some of your more advanced safety settings, like what happens when the disconnect from the controller, if it returns to home or if it just hovers or just descends into the ground. You can also turn your air sense on or off if you want ADS-B, at least in the United States, to be able to uh, sense other aircraft. And then we go into the control section. Here's where you can select metric in meters or kilometers and imperial. I'm in the US, so I use imperial. The gimbal mode to be FPV or follow mode here. And then you can calibrate the gimbal and do some advanced gimbal settings here between your different modes, normal mode, uh, cine mode, and sport mode. I think I've left all these on default um, just because, yeah. Here's where you can turn your phone charging on or off, especially nice in cold temperatures to keep your phone charged. Uh, because I use a smart controller, it's off on this, but here also, if you tap the function button once, it will recenter the gimbal. That's what I've got it set up. You can choose between a lot of other things here if you want, or if you double tap, you can have it lock or auto lock the exposure. Again, you can set this up to be a lot of what you want here um, as far as the different settings. Those are what I use just because I find those the most um, the most useful. If we go into the advanced tab, this is really great because this is where you can set up your different, the way the sticks respond. So for cine mode, I like it to be very, very low response in the center and then more response as you get out to the edge. Basically that means like you can make fairly large movements in the center and the drone will respond very little. And then as you get further out, the drone will respond more and more quickly as you get further out. That helps to make it so you have the most fine amount of control in the center. For cine mode, I find that to be nice. For normal mode, I have it a little bit yes, less. And then for sport mode, quite a bit less, um, depending on you know what I'm doing at the time. So that's a great way to be able to kind of fine tune your cine, your normal, and your sport mode controls. That's the way I've got it set up. If you use the smart controller, there's a few things that you can do differently. And so this is what I've done. By the way, the smart controller, if you want to record the screen, which is kind of handy, you swipe down, hit screen recording there. And if you find the screen is dimming or uh, turning too bright or kind of constantly fluctuating, you can turn the auto off and then you can control it right here, which is nice. Um, but if you want it to kind of auto sense the brightness or not brightness right there, launch the DJI Fly app and we pop right in there. You can see the screen recordings going in. Everything looks the same. If you tap here, you can kind of jump into all of those things, including like the SD card, internal storage, and formatting if you want to. But the main thing is that when you're in these different modes here, you get a few other options, not necessarily in here. All this is pretty much the same. You have the remote ID stuff on the new smart controller, which is nice. Uh, but when it comes to the controls, that's where you have some other options because you have two different jog wheels and you have the 5D controller as well as two buttons on the bottom here. You get these two buttons here, these two jog wheels and the 5D controller. So right here is where you can set those two buttons. I have one to recenter the gimbal and two to be the auxiliary LED to turn the uh, landing LED on or off. You can see like here, the gimbal goes down, goes back up. I can turn the, the auxiliary light on or on auto until it's uh, basically taken off. It's not gonna do anything. I usually leave it on auto, but sometimes when I'm flying at night, it's kind of nice to have it set to where I can uh, have it turn on when I'm coming back. So it helps me find the drone in the sky, even though it has a strobe on it. It still just makes it a little bit easier to find. Back in there. 
And then here you can adjust all of your 5D buttons. So upper, I have it if I want to ex increase the exposure or decrease the exposure is up or down. Left goes to pop it into explore mode, which turns to the zoom camera. So if you go here, it changes to the explore mode camera. Um, and then down uh, or right recenters the gimbal. I have, I don't know why I have that, but if you just push down here like that, it'll bring up all the advanced camera settings, which I find I need to get into every once in a while. So just like the other controller, you can turn tilt your con, uh, gimbal right here with this one. And by default, this one, when you're in the explore mode, will zoom in or out. I really hope that DJI gives us the ability to change the aperture with this, because that would be fantastic. But for now, you're basically limited to using it as the explore, uh, as the explore mode. As I said, this wasn't a complete like setting, setup, beginner tutorial, or anything like that. My friend Jevin Doe did one. That'll be linked in the description, or a card will pop up here or here. In the meantime, if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Or you can join my live stream, which happens Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I will see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.